All right, well, we're starting into uh, Module 3 entitled Research Strategies, and just to lay the groundwork for where we're heading, and this may be multiple videos simply because I, I'm trying to keep, um, keep it down around 10 minutes, and I've been running long on the other ones. But the, the question here is really how, uh, how do we as psychologists ask and answer questions? And, and this module is really very dense. Uh, with a lot of information to try to unpack. Um, but th the key here in terms of understanding how we go about asking and answering questions, it really uh, fits first and foremost on uh, the scientific method. And it hangs on this. And it's really very key that you understand this particular element. Now some of you uh, may have already uh, been exposed to the scientific method so some of this will be um, um, review for you. Others haven't really absorbed it with the kind of motivation uh, that you might have now and that that would be even more of a reason for us to keep our eye on the ball when we're talking about research strategies. So scientific methods, uh, the, the scientific method, I, I shouldn't make this plural, it's scientific method is the key here. The second thing is uh, w we start at probably the most um, cursory level or surface level when we look at description and we're going to talk a little bit about case studies, about naturalistic observation and about um, interviews and surveys which are part of this description. Uh, component of our strategy. Not all things lend themselves to, uh, not all studies, if you will, lend themselves to just experiments. Um, and you will see that as we, as, as we go through different demonstrations within psychology, um, and you'll see how it all works. So d description is another one. Um, another one is correlation. And we will look a, a little bit more in depth at how correlation works. Uh, this particular one oftentimes is talked about in the, the news today. There is a correlation between X and Y. Uh, and news is probably, the, the headline news is oftentimes the greatest abuser of this, that, that there is a relationship, but um, they make it sound as if it is one and the same with cause and effect, which it isn't, but we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so description, correlation, um, and then the other one, which is probably part of what you're more familiar with, is experimentation, where we actually have um, a uh, independent variable and a dependent variable, and oftentimes we have confounding variables. So uh, we have description, uh, correlation, we have uh, uh, experimentation, which we try to manipulate various variables to study um, a particular phenomenon and then come up with an understanding of each. So those, uh, the scientific method is the background. It is the foundation for all that we do. These are three very different methods by which we go about uh, researching an answer, whatever that answer might be. All right, so let's turn our attention to the actual scientific method. Um, a lot of times people talk about theory as a hunch, when in science, theory explains uh, with principles that organize the data themselves, the observations, and then go about trying to predict behaviors or events. And by organizing these various effects, or uh, these various um, facts, a theory basically simplifies it. But the scientific method is truly the foundation on which uh, most everything that we do in psychology is built on. And, and so it always follows a particular cycle. It starts out with um, a, a theory of some sort. Um, in, in most of psychology today, uh, there are competing theories about a variety of phenomenon that people engage in, but it proposes a certain outcome uh, based on the data. So we take that theory and we take the data and we make a hypothesis of our own based on this theory. For example, uh, 
my dissertation that I did in graduate school was on the effect that expectations have on the actual outcome of counseling. My hypothesis was that with increased information, people uh, and students uh, would participate and have a more positive experience with counseling because they had more information. So increased information leads to a more positive experience. That's the hypothesis. In other, on the flip side of that, we may say, uh, which would be the null hypothesis, is that with no information, uh, with no information, they would have a neutral experience would be a good example of that. So hypotheses are part of what really guides us to then begin to um, uh, develop and construct uh, an experiment to prove or um, to prove or disprove the hypothesis. And that's what the experiment attempts to do is to uh, basically actually disprove uh, the hypothesis. If it fails to do so, then of course the hypothesis stands. And that's uh, basically what the uh, experiment is meant to do. So once the experiment is complete, um, and part of that is also, um, so we, we dis disprove the second thing in this developing of experiment is something we refer to as an operational definition. And we will look at specific elements in that. For example, uh, definition in my, uh, in my particular research that I did for my dissertation, uh, expectations had to be defined. Um, the, the amount of information that the person would get had to be defined in an operational term. So expectation, uh, I had to find some way of operationally define that, and I used a test. Sometimes it, we use tests to actually define what operational definitions are. Then we put it to the test in the experiment itself, and then we examine the conclusions or the data, examine the data, um, and make conclusions. And that um, uh, is part of um, the scientific method. And the conclusion is either the hypothesis that is uh, forwarded was supported or not supported. Um, and that underlies almost all experimentation, all research, uh, within uh, psychology or in any other area of, of uh, science in general. So uh, when we develop our experiment, then when we're doing that, and you will do that if you persist throughout uh, psychology here at CCU, is you will have a, a research methods class, and you will develop an experiment, su suggest a hypothesis, operationally define your terms and then conduct the experiment to look at the data and make conclusions accordingly and you have just then uh, and that's the beauty of our particular class is that you you get to engage in experiments themselves and perhaps in some cases students will actually write papers and take them to the Rocky Mountain Psych Association as a means of, of uh, presenting their results so scientific method is the key to everything we do in uh, psychology and trying to test hypotheses and uh, support or not support specific hypotheses themselves.